Live from the PCTV studios, the Monday Morning Quarterback. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback. I'm Dave Reidenauer, the Monday Morning Quarterback, and I tell you, we're getting towards the home stretch of the area football season, playoff implications, league titles, all kinds of things are coming into place. So sit back and relax. We've got a great show planned for you tonight. Coach Mick and I will be back with all the last week's wrap-up right after these words from our sponsors. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Lajos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. This portion of the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback is brought to you by Security 5 for all your commercial and residential security system needs. Hey, we're back here on the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday morning quarterback Dave Reinhardt joined by my co-host for the high school show, Mr. Jim Mick and, and coach, as we mentioned there in a, in a little warm-up, that this is getting towards the nitty-gritty of the of the season. And, you know, we're at the end of October almost, and time flies each week or each year that we're on here. It seems it can't go faster and faster, but it does every year. And uh, we had some interesting play over the weekend, uh, some lopsided games. You know, we had talked about some games that looked sort of like mismatches on paper, and they turned out to be. But we had a couple of good games. And one of the games I think we got to start with, Coach, is, um, you know, the Potsgrove Fiendsville game. And, you know, certainly a, a, a trying day for everyone involved with, with the Potsgrove uh, football team and community. And uh, we send out all of our, our heartfelt uh, condolences and sympathies to the Potsgrove players, uh, the families, and, and everybody involved, and obviously Steve Mixon's family as well. As, you know, he was an equipment manager for over 10 years, and Rick Pennypacker's right-hand man, sort of a, you know, those unsung heroes that used to have coach. Coach Pius, and you know they got the equipment, they got things ready, dirty jobs that really other guys didn't want to do. And unfortunately, he passed away on Friday, the same day of the game. And I'm sure it was an emotional time for them uh, to get ready to play every, football. Every team has the Steve Mixons, and it, it's a very sad, as you said, sad situation. I mean, a guy that dedicated himself for 10 to 14 years. I mean, and as Coach Pennypacker said, he was like one of the family. Yeah. And and he was. It's very sad. Yeah, it's just a terrible thing, and they had a moment of silence uh, for Steve. And and uh, the, but I tell you what, the Falcons sort of rallied around him, and they were fired up, and they came out and just jumped all over Phoenixville. You know, the fans have been struggling anyway this year, but uh, they ran into a buzzsaw on Friday night, Coach. Well, I don't know where to start. Do I talk about Pottsgrove first, or do I talk about Phoenixville? The one thing I will say about Phoenixville is you're not even going to come close to winning a football game when you turn the ball over eight times. They had three interceptions, or five, five interceptions. interceptions. Oh, five interceptions, uh, three, three fumble fumbles. recoveries, and they can't run the football. And I know Coach Bryce Black and his staff are working very hard down there to get it going. Coach talks about that every week in the paper. We got to run the ball, and they just can't. 
Yeah, I mean, they, I think they had like 20 yards uh, rushing against uh, Pottsgrove, again, who takes pride in their defense, and they loaded up the box. Although, you know, we talked about Matt Poblinski from uh, Phoenixville yep. and Ian Brown, the quarterback, as two of their better players and guys that really had tried to do as much as they can. But, you know, it's sort of tough against uh, to go against a team like Pottsgrove, who seems to be peaking right at the right time. Right, and Phoenixville also – Turn the ball over three of their first four possessions, and you just can't do it. And, you know, Devin Fink, Torin Verdone, Mike Fowler, they're going at a high level right now. And you know they're looking forward to this Friday night at home. Exactly. PV. But, again, you know, almost 500 yards offense for, for Potsgrove. And, again, you mentioned Fiendsville just couldn't get anything going. And, and I know Coach uh, Brisblatt and, and his staff were working hard down there. The kids haven't given yep. up. But I'm certainly sure it was demoralizing. And Devin Fink, again, with another big day with 114 yards and three touchdowns. Again, Potsgrove getting ready to peak at the end of the season when they normally play so well. Now, another team coach that we talked about, uh, Perk Valley, who was really playing well. Scott Reed doing a great job. They lost some excellent players last year, uh, namely their quarterback, Rashawn Stewart, who is now playing at Villanova, their guy who was the quarterback and defensive back in the player of the area and all those different things. But I'll tell you what, tell me about this little Steven Sturm guy, the young sophomore quarterback that keeps getting better and better every week. I'm glad you asked me that because I was thinking on the way over here tonight, it is really something with Steven Sturm to come in as a sophomore and take the place of Stewart, who was a three-year starter there, one of the better players this league has ever has ever had. And now you've got Sturm doing his own thing, 16 of 25, 225 yards. He can throw the ball. He can run the ball. And the coaches in the league's got two more years to look at him. Absolutely. And he, he accounted for four touchdowns, two in the air and two on the ground. So he is a dual threat as a young sophomore. You know, one of those proverbial sons of a coach. You know, his father had coached for a lot of years down in the Philadelphia area. Now he's down at, excuse me, in Perkyoma Valley and doing a heck of a job. And, you know, they have a, a rarity in this league or this area that I don't remember a lot of really good ones, but they have a good kicker as well who's a young sophomore who's doing a good job. And, and their special teams with uh, Liam Grandy doing a good job punting the ball as well. So special teams also playing well at Perk Valley. And if, if, he was, if he was sitting here in my place, I know Steven Sturm would throw a lot of kudos to his offensive line because they are they don't get much recognition but they're good they're very good. Well, you know, who else doesn't get much recognition for Perk Valley's or defense, Coach? But every time you look up, and the teams, the other teams are scoring 10 or less points. I mean, they are playing very well defensively. You know, we, we had some of the PV kids on there earlier, but they had seven sacks, one fumble recovery. They're getting to the football with their little 3-5-3 defense. Not real big. I mean, we looked at them on no, film. They... I mean, holy cow, these kids are 5'9", 165 pounds, but they're getting to the football and making plays. Well, they line up in that whatever you want to call it, 3-3 three, three or 3-5. Three, Five, and, and they and they bring the house and you talk about how stingy that defense is they gave up 55 yards against Boyertown the other night yeah it's unbelievable and Boyertown have been playing well coach Parkinson and his gang had have improved you know they're up at the 500 mark they're at four and four four and three in the league four and four overall they had been playing well knocking off a couple of teams but you know they were no match for Perk Valley as Perk Valley moves to seven and zero oh and seven and one overall you know, Coach, each week we do have our top five, and now would be a good time to show that. Brought to you by the Sanatoga Thriftway. Get down there, see Joe C, Joe D, and all the gang down there, and tell them we sent you. Perk Valley still up there, number one. Potsgrove in the number two slot. Spring Ford, very solid in the third hole. Methacton at four. And Boyertown rounds out our top five. Again, our top five brought to you by the Sanatoga Thriftway. Get down there for all your food and grocery needs and tell them that we sent you. But I tell you, those two top teams are playing pretty well, Coach. As we mentioned, peaking towards the right time of the season. For Friday night. For Friday for night, Friday which we'll night get play. to a little yeah, bit later yeah. on in the show. And then there was one more game on Friday night, Methacton and Owen J. Uh, again, Owen J struggling as well this year. Methacton coming off a tough loss. We saw them play Springford in a game at Methacton uh, the Saturday before where Springford handled them very easily. And they rebound very nicely with a 32-6 win. Dave, they rebounded to win, but they also rebounded because I thought they were beat up and tired and etc. after that Springford game. A very, very physical game. And we were sitting right almost behind the bench 
and we could see how, how battered they were. Some of those kids looked like they were not going back in the game, but they got themselves back in there, and Coach LaPree had them ready to go on uh, Friday night over at O.J. Roberts at 237 yards rushing, 172 yards passing. Pretty good balance, huh? Well, their quarterback, I think, you know, and again, uh, you talk about league MVPs and guys who do as much for their team as anybody. I think you got to put Connor Derrickson right up there with all those guys that are playing so well. I mean, you know, normally you get those kind of players from the, the league champion or the second place team, but, you know, I don't know where Mathak is going to finish, somewhere in that top five, uh, three or four, five maybe teams. But Connor Derrickson, again, you know, he, he rushed for 148 yards at touchdown, threw for 172 and two more touchdowns. Down to counter for three of their four scores. And you know what he does a great job off of what I like is he he does a great job of executing off the play action pass. And sometimes today you just see that three step and they throw it. But he is very good off the play action passes to Louis Cotetta and yeah. Dante Thomas uh, and, and uh, they have some skilled yeah. players. Well, that's what I said. You know, you mentioned it after that game, uh, the Saturday before against Springford, when man, they looked like they're walking wounded. They were beat up, banged up. I mean, they didn't look like they were even had 11 guys who were ready to finish because, especially in the second half, when Springford just kept pounding on them, and and Selwyn uh, Simpson and those guys just ran the ball all over them. But, the, you know, they did rebound very well. And, again, that's a credit mm -hmm. to those kids and also to Coach Paul Dupree, who's done a nice job down there. You know, again, now let's talk a little bit about Owen Jay quickly, uh, Coach. You know, I mean, they're, they're, I, I don't quite – you know, I can't figure them out. They have some players. Coach Barr was happy about the guys going into the season. They still really haven't settled on a quarterback. They're alternating guys between the freshman Stewart and the senior Bradford. Uh, you know, their new defense they're all excited about, and they're having a hard time stopping guys. You know, they're having some problems over Bucktown. I've watched them on tape. They play very, very hard. Tommy has them playing very hard. But they seem to get it going, maybe with the run game and things like that, and they stub their toes. Something always happens. A penalty. They had three turnovers against Methacton. You just can't commit that many turnovers or penalties if you're going to be in the game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and again, like I said, it's, it's sort of a, a head-scratcher over there, and I'm sure Tommy Barr and his staff are doing more than we are here on the set of the Monday Morning Quarterback Show. But, uh, you know, they're sitting at 1-7, and seven and, and they haven't been that competitive in a lot of games. And, and I know Tommy Barr thought they'd be at least a 500 squad going into this season. So there's still some work to do over in ONJ. Takes us to Saturday games. We had uh, two good games on Saturday, uh, Upper Perk and Potsdown. Mm. We talked about them. We had Mike Felix on the show last week as our player of the week, he and Tom Hans, and they were all jacked up, excited. Uh, you know, when Mike Felix is healthy, he certainly is a difference maker, and Saturday afternoon he did the same thing, Coach. Well, they're progressing nicely as a total football team. Uh, they have two wins in a row, and that's the first time they've won two games in a row since 20. 11. And as you said, Mike Felix has made a big difference in that ball game, especially uh, offensively. Well, you know, it's funny because Pottstown was supposed to be jacked up for this one. It was their homecoming game. Uh, actually, a lot of my buddies, uh, it was their 50th anniversary or, uh, reunion, as a matter of fact. They all went to the game. Class of 1964. Some of those guys that I knew for a long time. And they were all at the game. They were all jacked up. And Pottstown moved the ball well between the 20s. Again, they sort of outstat a lot of teams, coaches. And I know you and I aren't the big stat guys. But they gain more yards than they give up. But they can't get it. Four times they're inside. The, the red zone and come up with no points. They had 345 yards total offense. And scored seven points. To uh, Upper Perks, 320-some. Yeah. And they got inside the red zone four times, twice inside, inside the, the five-yard five yeah. line, and, come and came up the, empty. Yeah. Nothing. And and that's, you know, and again, I'm, I'm not the biggest spread guy either. I know that's the offense of, of this t day and time. But, you know, get up under center and let your, your eye backs go and pick some holes and get those offensive linemen off the ball a little bit. But I, I don't know. It's like I said, inside the five twice and come up with no points. And you mentioned nearly 350 yards and only have yeah, seven yeah. points. It's tough. But Felix had another big game, 165 yards. He broke an 85-yarder against Pottstown. And with their speed in the second, there. You wouldn't think they'd give up those kind of big plays, but Felix did a nice job, and they come away with a real big win as Coach Hans has his gang at 3-4. and four. Zeke Hallman is also doing a nice job. I think he's a young quarterback. I saw him play against Sophomore. Springford, yep. 
And, uh, you know, when he didn't get the rush on him too bad, he stood in there with a lot of poise and threw the football the way you should. And, nice and your boy, kid. Samki Akpunamu. Yeah, don't even new, mention new, new, that. Yeah. Whatever he is, <laughs> he had a big fourth quarter with 60 yards in the fourth quarter as well as they tried to play a little ball control and keep the ball away from Potsdam. You know, Coach, each week we do have our defensive play of the week. Brought to you by the Security 5 for all your commercial and residential security systems. Give Randy Logan, give Scott Logan a call over there. And uh, let's see what Jesse has in store for us as our defensive player, or player of the game. Or, excuse me, of the week. There we can see the rollout again. There's Perk Valley all over Boyertown. Lawrence Garnett has really gotten a lot better as a quarterback, a junior at Boyertown. But, again, this is his defense that I said is very underrated. <clears throat> And boom, there's the big play. Bang, bang, bang. Fumbles the ball. They end up do getting a safety on the play. Perk Valley but again, can. Perk Valley, underrated defense. And that's our security five defensive play of the week. All right, we got one more game. Again, you know, we talked about it last week. It looks sort of like a mismatch on paper. And Springford coming off a real big win uh, over the always tough Methacton at Methacton the Saturday before. And they just have their way 56 nothing with Pope John Paul. Well, I don't want to start off with this, but I was talking to Coach Brubaker about it. Uh, we don't have to spend – and I don't want to stir the soup. I'm not that type, but – When's the league going <laughs> to? When's, when's the league going to do something about parity in the league? Because as we said here, all the five six weeks we've been here, we talk about team scoring in the 60s and the 50s, and that's just not necessarily be because offenses are wide open. That has something to do with it, but not total. Now, Springford, 459 yards total offense. A great balance between run and pass, led by Brandon Leecroft who keeps getting better every week. And they got good young players like Danny Matthews, Brandon Barone, Matt Gibson. And then they bring a guy out. You talk about depth and things like that, and we saw it down at Methacton. They bring Selwyn Simpson off the bench in the uh, second half. He runs for 135 yards and had another good game on, uh, on Saturday. Well, they certainly do have their share of skilled players. I mean, they, you know, they put uh, Lee Craft back there in, in that shotgun in the spread formation. He just moves the ball all over the place. They do spread it around. Six different receivers caught a pass led by uh, Barone and Matthews. I mean, those two guys get open. They got a lot of people that are actually starting to use the tight end a little bit more. Big old Rodin ball making. A couple of catches yeah. there, too. So, you know, offensively, uh, 492 yards, almost 500 yards against Pope John Paul. But, you know, we talked about them. They had six penalties, a fumble, two interceptions, and only 60 yards rushing against um, uh, Springford, and most of them coming in the second half. PJP, you know, what can I say? Uh, coach Graver is a, is a good young coach, and if he gets the time, he will build that program. And as – Rome wasn't built in the day, and, and this program's not going to be built in the day either. And he is trying, and, and if you've coached for any period of time, you've all go through bad seasons. Anybody that coached for a period of time said, I never had a bad season. Well, they had him. Mm -hmm. And Coach Graver is in that situation right now. He may be in it for another year or two, so he gets some players in there. You know as well as I do that players win games. And uh, – he has eight underclassmen on offense, eight underclassmen on defense, and he is trying to stay as positive as he can with his team, which I think is a very good philosophy. Well, yeah, he's got to keep them interested in the game, especially yep. today. You know, so many times kids, if they're not having success, just will quit and go the other way rather than stay in there and fight. We hope for uh, Coach Graver and, and his gang to hang in there as well as, you know, the Phoenix Phils, the Potts Towns, the Owen Jays. I mean, all four of those teams have one win up until this point. And, and so they have to stick together and finish this season strong, maybe win a game or two and springboard them into the winter and the all-season conditioning and so on. They get ready for the spring. All right, Coach, well, we have to take our first time out. We're going to take a quick break here and, and hear what our sponsors have to say. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about playoffs and we're going to talk about next week's games right here on the Vlaho Stun Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. 
Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243, 800-222-0243, or online at fredbeans.com. Score with big savings at Sanatoga Thriftway. Our large selection of food, drinks, and household items at great prices to keep you coming back. Stop by the deli and order big party platters so you can be fully prepared for the big game. As always, our friendly staff and fast checkout will make your shopping experience quick and enjoyable. Sanatoga Thriftway is celebrating our 14th anniversary of serving the Tri-County area. So stop by and check us out so we can check you out. Hey, we're back here on the show. Dave Ryan, now, Jim Mick, as we're getting ready to talk a little bit about the playoffs and what's happening there. And then, of course, we're going to forecast this week's games coming up. And, and Jim, in, in the 4A, uh, which we normally start with, with the, which is the larger schools, which is half of our league, um, you know, Coatesville uh, is number one. They and Pensbury had been tied for the number one seed in District 1. Pensbury lost, however, over the weekend. Quakertown now moves up into the second slot. Coatesville still at number one. And the highest ranked team in our area is number 10, Perk Valley. You know, in Methacton and Springford are a long, long stretch. But, you know, in, in thinking about our league, Dave, we have a lot of these quad A schools like Perk Valley, like Methacton, like Springford, that at times got to drop down and play a double A and triple A. You don't get as many points. Now, it can work both ways. The smaller schools, if they're good, well, get a lot of points if, if yeah. they can beat those larger yeah. schools. So it, it, it's difficult when you look at it, it's a two-edged sword, really. Yeah, there's no question about that. And, and again, Pottsgrove now in the AAA, uh, they are, it's funny, they won, they won convincingly 61 to 10, and yet they dropped the spot from third to fourth now because they play another smaller school and they, who doesn't have any wins. So, you know, all that formula together. So Pottsgrove dropped from third place to tied for fourth with Academy Park. Springfield, Delco, still number one. They are undefeated in AAA. Great Valley, a former uh, Pac-8 yeah. school and a Chesapeake school, sits at the number two slot at seven and one. But, you know, th this game that I guess we'll talk about next, which is the big game, which will be shown here on the PCTV Network Sports Channel, will be Pottsgrove and, um, um, excuse me, uh, Park, Park Valley. Yeah. At Pottsgrove, and again, you know, we talked about the emotional thing with, with Steve Mixon, his passing, and, and what the coaches and the kids are going through. Uh, an emotional game against Phoenixville Friday night. Now they got to gear it back up for their most important game of the season. Well, they'll be geared up because they're playing at home, and they love to – well, like any other school, they, they love to play at, play at home. Now Penny Packer Field as pa well. Penny Packer Field, yep. and uh, – and, and I think, you know, we can talk about all the skilled kids that play for P.V. Strum and the kids over uh, Fowler at Pottsgrove, a lot of skilled kids. But I think myself personally, in any big game, it's going to come down to the line play. I think they're both good. They're both good offensive lines. Pottsgrove's offensive line against Perks Valley, stunning defensive line and stuff. I think that's where, if I'm a fan, that's what I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch that up front play and see who's gaining the advantage. And another thing is I can't turn the ball over if I'm going to win. Well, you know, it's interesting because Potsgrove has been there before, Coach. You know, that's one of those things where they know how to win those big games. You know, Perk Valley is, is just starting to learn them. They've won some big games the last couple of years. They've beaten uh, Methacton. They've beaten Springford now. Uh, they're still waiting to knock off a team like Potsgrove. I, I know Scott Reed would like nothing more to go into Penny Packer Field and win that game and, and remain undefeated, obviously, in the Pac-10 with a good shot to win the Pac-10 championship. On the other side, obviously, Rick Penny Packer wants to knock those babies off and try to get a share of that Pac-10 title. But you talked about the defensive and offensive fronts. You know, big old Fink, uh, uh, Finn, you know, he's a guy that could be a, a big player in this. You know, he's a two-way guy. He finished second in the state in wrestling last year as a heavyweight. He's a heck of a player. Old Pat Finn, who is, uh, I think it's Rick Penny Packer's nephew, he's a heck of a player. He's going to have something to say about this. And game. I think the Pottsgrove linebackers have played well in the games that, that I have seen. And on the other side, and I think you mentioned it uh, before, about Perkyoma Valley, they're not the biggest 
guys. And they're, those guys playing defense are probably playing the offensive line, too. But they come after you. They do. Boy, they, you talk about pursuit. Yeah, they're like little hornets out yep. there, little yellow jackets. They're stinging you. They get a lot of hats on the football. And, and I, I credit uh, Scotty Reed and his staff for doing a heck of a job. And I think it's a very, very underrated defense. That's going to be a heck of a ball game. Get out there and watch that one in person. Go home and watch it right here on the PCTV Network Sports Station. Well, we have a couple other games on Friday night. O&J travels to Springfield. Ford. Again, now there's a game that on paper ONJ has not played well. Spring Ford is really peaking at the right time of year. They're playing very, very well. They've looked great the last three games in a row. And, and you know, they're going to host ONJ Roberts, who is still searching, still trying to find a quarterback. You know, they're going to have to play well to hang with Spring Ford's offense. Well, as you said, they're playing very, very well right now. I thought uh, Spring Ford against Mathacht, and they look like a solid football team. Uh, offense, defense, and, and special teams. And if O&J, here again, I know it's redundant by saying this, if they're going to hang in the game, they got to stop stubbing their toe and uh, not make mistakes and get penalties and keep the game close as long as possible. Well, that's what you said. You said it many times this year, Coach, and I certainly agree. If you can run the football and play good, solid D and keep the game close into the fourth quarter, you always have a shot. And if ONJ can sort of follow that formula, they may be able to give Springford a big game. But Springford at home is going to be fired up. Phoenixville at Upper Perk now. Again, the Phoenixville Phantoms are struggling. You know, they haven't played well. Now they travel to Upper Perk. Upper Perk has won two games the first time, as you mentioned, Coach, since 2011. Tommy Hans has them fired up, and as long as Mike Felix stays healthy, they seem to be a pretty tough team. Well, they got that big motivation going for them right now. So uh, going to practice right now is fairly easy at Upper Perk because we won two in a row, things like that. Coach Breisblock and his staff, they got a heck of a job just getting those kids out there motivated to play and, above that, to win. So, well, you know, with Upper Perk at 3-4, and four, Coach, excuse me, if they win this game, they even their record off at 4-4, four and four, which would be a real feather in Tom Hans' cap. You know, he comes in there as a first-year coach, not a lot of football experience, some junior high stuff, but as the head wrestling coach for 20-plus years, now he comes in and teaches them that little toughness and that wrestling mentality. If they could finish 500 or around there for, the, for his first year, I think that's a heck of a job. They don't have a shot at the playoffs, do they? No, no, no they don't. No. Nope. No. No playoffs for them. But that should be a good one. And, again, both squads think they have a shot. Now there are two games on Saturday. Pottstown travels to Methacton. Again, it's not an easy place to play. Uh, it's, it's sort of a long bus ride for these kids, even though it's really not that long. But in this in new league where they're, everyone's pretty close together, on a Saturday afternoon at Methacton, Pottstown needs a rebound and play well after Methacton did, this, did that last week in their big win. The key word for Pottstown is consistency. Consistency, consistency on both sides of the ball because we've seen them sometimes this year play pretty good defense. Last couple games they fell apart and they showed last week that they can move the ball on offense. So if they're going to be there in the fourth quarter, be consistent. Don't make those big mistakes. And you better keep your eye on number eight, Connor Derrickson, because he is certainly a very, very talented kid in an all-league all caliber, maybe even league MVP type uh, kid for Methacton. And, of course, the last game is Boyertown mm -hmm. at Pope John Paul. Boyertown smarting a little bit after a loss this past weekend. They get down to Pope John Paul, and you talked about Coach Graver's gang trying to find themselves and sort of find a little identity uh, with the Golden Panthers. Well, if they can stay away from mistakes and get some type of consistent offense going, because as we know, Boyertown struggles at times running the football. So that leaves the door open for PJP to keep the game close. All right, well, that'll about do it for Coach and I. Again, another fun week here on the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday morning quarterback. Broke down last week's stuff. Look ahead a little bit to this week and into the playoffs. We're going to take a quick timeout, and when we come back, we're going to meet the coach and player of the week right here on the show.
Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr., call us or visit our website now long last date night has arrived and you want to make it something special something romantic you've heard a lot of great things about panavino in the new downtown district fine italian dining with a cosmopolitan flair drinks before dinner at the bar why not then it's just us savoring the creations of chef david brennan what's this dinner and a movie for two only fifty dollars panavino italian restaurant truly is the beginning of the perfect evening in the new downtown reading Grab your mug and your kilt and come on down to Doc Watson's. We have great food, drinks, and different bar games. Our nightly specials will keep you coming back for more. Join us Monday through Friday, 4 to 6, for some fun at happy hour with dollar off drinks. The pub is newly renovated and under new management. It will surely become your new favorite place. We're located at 1080 East Philadelphia Avenue in Gilbertsville. Doc Watson's a true Irish pub. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243, 800-222-0243, or online at fredbeans.com. This portion of the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback is brought to you by Fujiyama, the total Japanese steakhouse and sushi bar experience. We're back here on the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback, and this portion of our show also brought to you by the Trophy and Plaque Sack. My man Charlie Pierce and his girl Pat. Montgomery does a heck of a job with us working on our, our giveaways. And also Phil Lang at the Digital Print Works provides our certificates and all the print material that we need. And, and this week, we we're fortunate enough to have uh, the gang from Springford, uh, Chad Brubaker, in his fifth season already, believe it or not, and the player of the week, Zach Dorsey, a two-way lineman for the Rams. Guys, uh, welcome to the show, and congratulations on another big win for you down at Springford. Thanks for having us, Steve. All right. You. you know, Chad, um, you know, I can't believe it. I said, I looked there and I was started thinking about things in five years it's been since you've yeah. been at Springford already. And uh, where does Getting the time old. go? Yeah, where does the time go? I mean, it seems, uh, doesn't yeah, seem like know. it's been that long, I tell you. Yeah, I mean, it flies. You know, the season, this season has gone by real quickly. And uh, I think it, it just kind of bump up against each other and, 
Here we are. You know, Zach, this is your senior year, and, and you know, I, I told my sons when they played, I said, you got to enjoy that senior year because it goes by so fast. And, and you know, they, we had the pleasure of playing until Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving Day. You guys don't have that anymore, but uh, I'm sure it seems like it's flying by for you as well. No, it honestly has, and it has been a blast too. But uh, it's gone by way faster than I, I've thought. And I was warned about it, though. <laughs> it does. It really goes. I'm telling you, I remember sitting there as a player Thanksgiving morning and tears coming down my eyes. Couldn't believe that my, my high school career was over already. But, you know, last year you guys had a great season. You know, you, you finish 8-1, uh, and one, you 10-3 and three overall. You win uh, a round in the playoffs. Uh, you beat a good Downingtown West team. You know, you, you lost a lot of guys, though. So coming into this year, uh, what kinds of things did you think about? How, how did you approach the season, Chad? And what did you forecast for your guys? Well, you know, um, in the off season, we spend a lot of time as a staff, you know, thinking about what we're having come, what we will have coming back. And, um, you know, we always go out on the road um, and, and go to clinics and always attend spring practice. And um, this year we went to Princeton, um, who is uh, Stevie Verbit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've we've done a lot in the past couple of years where we've gone. The previous year we went to NC State, North Carolina who um, were all up-tempo, no huddle, um, Duke. And um, so we had been heading that direction. Uh, we just felt like with the kids that we had coming back, um, you know, we've had the luxury of some pretty good tailbacks over the last four years. And, um, you know, we weren't sure what we were going to have there. And so uh, we decided we needed to try to come up with some kind of competitive advantage, and that's, that's what we came up with. And it's been, it's been interesting. It's been interesting for me. Um, one of the things, and I'm sure Coach Mick will relate to this a little bit, is, you know, we have always had our quarterback come over to the side, tell him to play. Uh, we didn't run it in with receivers, but that gave me especially an element of control to say, you know, hey, if they're in this, do right. this. If they're in that, do that. Right. And I've had to kind of give up some of that. Yeah. And uh, to Brandon Leecraft's credit, he's done a great job. And we really need our quarterback to be somebody that can can get us into the right play, and and he's done a great job of that. Because I, I noticed at the at the Mathaki game, you got pictures and all those different mm -hmm. things. And yeah. Coach Mick and I are hoping that from the <laughs> Monday morning quarterback, we get on that board. And oh we, yeah, that's a good idea. Sort of a big play. Whenever you need a big play, put, well, listen, our, put uh, our picture up there. I, I tell you what, I, I'm I'm a little I'm in trouble for being here tonight because. We do a show at school called The Gridiron okay. with Ramka, and they told me I'm under contract and I can't, <laughs> I can't appear on another well, network. Well, I have my so people talk I, to your yeah, people, Yeah, yeah, right? you better. I'm in trouble. <laughs> well, you know, and obviously off-season for you was a little bit different. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, Zach started as a sophomore and missed his whole junior season uh, with a knee injury, and so you, you couldn't play, so you had to do a lot of rehab and a lot of uh, – conditioning and, and getting that knee back uh, to 100 percent and uh, tell us a little bit about what your offseason was like uh, my offseason was honestly it was rehab almost every day well pretty much every day then I lifted and then we had we still had football practices well not practices we had um workouts and other things just to go to, to attend just yeah and you're not busy. allowed to have practice you know you don't want no to, yeah don't, don't want to get, get, get in no. trouble yeah. also not only with his with his agents but now he's going to get in trouble with that but but uh you know but you you know what did you actually do to your knee did you tear that acl what yeah i uh, i dislocated my knee i tore my acl and i tore both my meniscuses wow. and i strained my mcl yeah. wow so that was a heck of a rehab for you and and obviously you have some some high hopes for seniors like zach uh, in that leadership role. I know you had to replace 11 guys on defense, and you've had some skilled players. You talked about your, your tailbacks, and you've had some good players. So what kind of uh, things did you have planned up for, for guys like Zach and, and the rest of the seniors? Well, you know, Zach, first of all, his, his he started 15 games as a sophomore, actually 14 games as a sophomore. Um, and uh, we were at camp when, it, when he hurt his knee, and – um, we had we had a lot of high hopes for him as a junior, and uh, you know he he worked so hard in the off season. Zach's one of those kids. He has a first period strength class, and he comes in early and he'll go for a run. In fact, he lost a lot of weight um, last winter, maybe a little too much at the time, but um, uh, he he's just done a great job in rehabbing. It's amazing. He has a lot of uh, he has a lot of intestinal fortitude to, to come through that and he'd be there before I was a lot of mornings and just seeing him work hard was a real testament to the kind of person he is and his 
Uh, he's got a strong uh, mother in his life, and and uh, she uh, is a testament to how how he was. We well, need that support system, that's for sure, Zach. And you know what is <laughs> it? What do you, what do you have? Uh, well, what is it about you that makes you do it when? You know, someday that knee is a little sore and you don't feel like doing those extra reps and the, your trainer says you got to do this or whatever. What, what is it? What makes you go? Do you have that motivation? It, uh, it honestly, a lot of it is, has to do with my mother. Just uh, since, ever since I started playing sports, it's just been on me just to keep going and do my best, always give him 100%. And it, it is her, just... That's, that's awesome, and then that, you certainly can't do that, you know, things w without that support system, and I know that the coaching staff was behind you 100%. Now, you do play both ways, so not only did you miss a whole year, uh, you're coming back and jumping into the fire. How's, how's that going for you, playing on both sides of the ball? Honestly, I love it. Just uh, getting in there, just being able to play more. As much as I get to play is, is what I want. Well, obviously, he's one of your better players because I know you like to do a what you call one-and-a-half platoon. Uh, you know, most of the guys only play one way, one side of the ball, offense or defense, and you have a couple of guys doing both. So, obviously, he fits in your plans pretty well. Well, you know, the thing about Zach, too, I think it's, it's unfortunate for us. Um, I know you guys were talking about the playoff picture earlier, and, and uh, the, 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 we're, we're not going to make the playoffs even if we are successful in our last two games. And, um, it's a shame because Zach's really coming into his own right now. You know, I think it took him a couple games to kind of forget about the knee. I mean, that's always in the back of your mind mm -hmm. in practice and everything. And he's a little, you know, a little gingerly in, at times, going a little gingerly. And um, I think now he, I don't think he thinks about it. Um, and and it's unfortunate because he's hitting his stride. And I think we are as a team um, playing much better as you as you mentioned before. And um, we had a stinker earlier in the year, had a tough uh, road trip up to State College and then played really poorly at PV. Testament to them, not taking anything away from them, but and then a tough one with Potsgrove. Potsgrove and yeah. unfortunately, you know, I just feel like um, at seven and three, it's a shame, you know, you look at the District 1 field and I think we could be competitive yeah. with a lot of those teams or most of those teams. And, um, you know, it's I, I want the seniors to get to experience that their senior year. Fortunately for Zach, you know, he's as one of the few seniors yeah. that experienced it as a yeah. sophomore. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of guys experienced it last year as juniors right. contributed. But right. what do you, do you prefer one side of the ball or the other, Zach? I mean, uh, what do you like, offense, defense? You like hitting people? Do, what, do, uh, what, do, what do you like? I, I do like, I like hitting people. But um, as a sophomore, I like playing offense a lot. I do, I'm, I'm leaning a little bit more to defense right now. But I just, I like hitting people. I like being on the football field. Okay, well, they have you listed at 6'2 and about 265. Are you, are you carrying that pretty well now? Yeah, I am. I uh, now, do you wear a brace at all on that knee? Yeah, I do okay. wear a brace. It's actually, it causes, it causes my leg to tighten up just a little bit, but... Uh, you're getting used to that yeah. now as well. You know, when I looked at some of the things here, getting ready for tonight, uh, you know, offensively, you guys are you're first in the league. You know, you're averaging over 400 yards a game. Uh, you're, you're pretty good balance between the run and the pass. And obviously, that's one of the things you, you try to do. And you're not afraid to throw that ball. And your quarterback has come a long way here from the beginning of the season. So, Lee Craft as a senior. A senior? Mm -hmm. a senior? Yeah, he's a yeah. senior. Okay, making some good reads and going through the yeah. progressions for you. Well, he, you know, we thought last year that – going into he got hurt um, against ONJ um, last year and he was just starting to come into his uh, own and uh, in fact he made a couple checks in that game that he hadn't done in previous games and they were the right checks um, got hurt that game was out for the rest of the year um, so it took him a couple games this year to kind of get into his you know full stride um, but you know you you know you said earlier um, and I, you can tell I'm listening because I referenced a couple <laughs> things but uh, he, he's you know it's, you guys aren't statistics guys, but when you look at uh, Brandon's yeah, statistics, mm -hmm. you know, 19 touchdowns, two interceptions, uh, just off the charts. And, um, you know, we'd like to see his completion percentage up a little, a little high, higher. Yeah. You know, at Methacton, you guys yeah, were there. He was a little high. He was a little erratic first, yeah. at times. Mm -hmm. But then he hit, once he hits his stride, he's on it. And um, But the big point, the big thing is he's making really good reads, especially in the run game. Especially in the run game, he does a nice job with that. So... Um, you know, he's, he's come a, uh, a long way and does a great job for now, us. Now, when you prepare for a game each week and, you know, say leading up to the Methacton game or whatever, uh, do you have to find yourself working harder on one side of the ball or the other? Is there is it a lot more of a mental thing on offense and physical thing on defense? Or how do you approach getting ready for the, for the game on Friday night, Saturday afternoon? 
Uh, I I don't really think about it. I just kind of I go to practice, do like work as hard as I can in practice, do what I do in the off season, talk with my friends, talk with uh, fellow players. We just kind of get ready together and just. <laughs> Do it up, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's funny because you guys have hit your stride, and, and I thought you played a very, very solid game on both sides of the ball against Methacton. You were a disruptor. You know, you and Zimmy and the guys were getting a good push and, and, and into the uh, offensive backfield and, and had those guys running around. Uh, were you psyched up for that game, a little extra there for, for Methacton? Yes, w without a doubt, because that was going to be – that was another big game for us and that we really wanted to win just to prove what we could do. And – we we were we were especially hyped. We were Zimmy had a a big speech in the halftime. <laughs> okay. It was it was, all it, good, was huh? it was good. Yeah. Well, you know it was it was funny because I know you know I I'm fortunate enough to work with the uh, football coaches association uh, and and you know there was some talk about the SATs and the Saturday afternoon games getting pushed back till two thirty. Uh, let me start with Zach first because I know you'll have more to say than Zach <laughs> will. But uh, how did you feel about that playing at two thirty on a Saturday afternoon? Did it? I mean, did you take SATs that morning? No. I okay, you didn't have to, but was it a? I mean, did you find yourself like, what am I going to do all day, or how do you, you know, how do you do it that? It was, it was definitely, it was strange because a lot of players, when we we have a routine that we always do before uh, pregame, and a lot of players weren't couldn't be there because they had SAT, and we had to, we also had to change how we practice and warmed up, but. It, it was it was definitely different from what we usually did, but I think we we changed real well to it. Like we did a nice. All job. right, your turn. Go ahead. I know you no, aren't you know, too happy no. about it, but uh, no, I, I mean, wouldn't have been either as a yeah. player or as a coach. I, I I wouldn't you know I wouldn't have been happy about that scenario. Well, but. it is it's an unfortunate thing, and you know, Methacton, We originally had it at three thirty. Yeah. And then we backed it. They they backed it to two well, thirty. Second and, half would been played in the dark. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, you know, it was um, it was a situation where we had some kids who weren't there in time for the start of the game and I just think that's unfortunate like if, if you know if that was Methacton's undefeated we're undefeated going in that game fortunately that was not the case because you know you don't want to you, you want everybody to be at their best when you, when, and compete at yeah. a high level when you go against each other but I mean we made it work we decided to uh, turn everything upside down honestly as a coaching staff we turned the whole thing upside down um, we usually we're notoriously early for games um, and we go through our routine and um, spend about an hour, 15 minutes on the field before the game, going through our, um, you know, our pregame. Um, so we did all that at our at our on right. our practice field, and then hopped on the bus and got over there, stretched again, and and uh, went from there. But uh, you know, we we just decided to turn it all upside down um, just to. Uh, make it clear that this was not a routine right. as opposed to trying to do our routine and then it didn't, you know, didn't look right. You well, know, we had so. a similar situation when I was coaching and, and uh, we played Potchgrove on a Saturday afternoon and they made the time back, we had whatever. We warmed up at our place, got off the bus and Scotty Glenn rode, <laughs> ran for about 375 yards and broke the league record and, and they weren't real happy with us, but that's what we had to do. That's what we felt we needed to do and I know you guys got there and did a quick warm up and yeah. got out on the field as well. Well, you beat PJP 56 nothing, and you guys had another big offensive day. Um, and these guys up front on both sides of the ball did very, very well. And uh, you felt pretty good going into that one, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, real good. And, you know, you're, you're doing your thing and your guys are peaking. You have two games left starting this week with Owen J. Roberts. Uh, what do you see from Owen J. that you have to get ready for, Coach? Well, you know, Owen J. does a – you know, they sit in their base front, but they uh, blitz a lot from different angles, from different spots. Um, and so – and they do a good job of it, especially off the, off the outside and – so we're going to have to, um, you know, we're trying to prepare for that. Um, in the secondary, you know, they uh, give a cover two look, a cover four look. Some, they give different looks, man looks too. So um, something, again, that's going to be on Brandon to watch his, you know, watch a film, study the game plan, and be ready to go this week. Um, and like I said, he's been doing a pretty good job of that. All right, well, you got two games left in your, in your senior career, maybe an all-star game or so or whatever. But uh, how do you get prepared for these last two? <laughs> Uh, just keep doing what we have been doing, but just got to remember that when we go into these games, we're still trying to have fun and also trying to win and do our best. Absolutely. Well, we wish you the best. Any uh, any future plans? Are you getting an opportunity to think about that yet, playing at the next level at all? Uh, I, I've tried not to focus on it right now. Okay. Stay with what you're doing there yeah. as well. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming by. Uh, we have a couple of things for you, Zach, uh, as the player of the week. Again, we talked about the uh, digital print works. It's, 
courtesy of Phil Lang and his guys, we got the little certificate naming you the player of the week. We have our little mini Heisman there that not a lot of linemen get to handle. So there you, go. you got to handle right. that mini, uh, that little mini Heisman we give All out right, here on the you. show. But congratulations on a good season. Glad you're back 100%, and, and good luck the rest of the way. Who knows? Before the end of the year, maybe he'll maybe he'll have the ball. In Absolutely. Side, so there you go. In the goal line situation, <laughs> give it to you inside the five, ready to rock and roll. Hey, Chad Brubaker doing another great job in his fifth season at Springford, and, of course, Zach Dorsey, the, the, the very fine two-way line who is our player of the week right here on the Vlaus Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback. Well, we have to say goodbye to these guys. We've got a good friend of mine waiting in the wings, special guest Aaron Beasley, formerly of Pottstown, West Virginia, Jaguars, Falcons, Jets, uh, Bandits. I don't know who it's all kinds of guys. But anyway, we're looking forward to talking to my man Aaron Beasley, Killer Bees, right after this. But again, congratulations and thanks to Chad Brubaker and Zach Dorsey. We'll be right back. Score with big savings at Sanatoga Thriftway. Our large selection of food, drinks, and household items at great prices will keep you coming back. Stop by the deli and order big party platters so you can be fully prepared for the big game. As always, our friendly staff and fast checkout will make your shopping experience quick and enjoyable. Sanatoga Thriftway is celebrating our 14th anniversary of serving the Tri-County area. So stop by and check us out so we can check you out. Grab your mug and your kilt and come on down to Doc Watson's. We have great food, drinks, and different bar games. Our nightly specials will keep you coming back for more. Join us Monday through Friday, 4 to 6, for some fun at happy hour with dollar off drinks. The pub is newly renovated and under new management. It will surely become your new favorite place. We're located at 1080 East Philadelphia Avenue in Gilbertsville. Doc Watson's, a true Irish pub. Date night has arrived. And you want to make it something special. Something romantic. You've heard a lot of great things about Panavino in the new downtown district. Fine Italian dining. With a cosmopolitan flair. Drinks before dinner at the bar? Why not? Then it's just us. Savoring the creations of Chef David Brennan. What's this? Dinner and a movie for two? Only $50? Panavino Italian Restaurant truly is the beginning of the perfect evening. In the new downtown Reading. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr., call us or visit our website now. Joined by my man Killer Bees, Aaron Beasley, our my man from Pottstown. Uh, Aaron, welcome to the show, my man. How you been? Good to be back. Good to be back. <laughs> always good. It's always good to have you on there, and uh, we always have a lot of fun. Aaron is a very dynamic guy, charismatic guy, and wherever he goes, fun follows. And uh, we're going to have some fun here tonight. But I tell you, it's pretty good. Uh, interview there with Zach Dorsey and Coach Brew Baker, and good to see those young high school guys doing well. Oh, man, because, you know, just playing the game, there's always that love, and it's always, 
you know, whether it's high school, little league, uh, off season, it's, it's like this, the sport of football has just become one of those things where you, you can't live without it. Yeah, and, and it's still in your blood. I'm sure you were down in West Virginia this weekend for the big game uh, against Baylor, and uh, uh, what a big win for, uh, for your Mountaineers. Oh, it was – it felt like when I played down there, you know, uh, when we played against the number one team in the country. Oh, did you, I was going to say, did you ever yeah. play against a top five team like that? Yeah. Yeah, we played against uh, the Miami Hurricanes. Okay, okay. And it, it, they had that kind of atmosphere. I mean, you can hear my voice. I, I can barely. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm barely. <laughs> yeah, you and, and I, we were talking a little bit off camera, but uh, you know, our boy Terrell Chestnut from Pasco played well, but man, he really got rocked uh, in there in that game. I think it was on an interception or something. Where oh, uh, he got he got beat. It was, like he, yeah. it, was a, it was a lose lose <laughs> for him. He, he got beat, and then he got. Uh, yeah, he got rocked. He got by demolished, and, and it was and it was a clean hit, and they were checking to see if it was a helmet. The helmet wasn't, but it, the guy hit shoulder to chest. Yeah. And, man, it we was always say keep your head on a swivel. Yes. Right. And I think he was probably so upset that he got beat for almost. A, I mean, it wouldn't have been a touchdown, but he got beat. Yeah, yeah, it was not bad. But you know what? It's it's funny. I, I I you know checking out, getting ready for the show. I can't believe you're 41 years old already, man. What's yeah. up with that? See, you know me. I do know as, you. A like, little Ducky Ducky. Yeah, yeah, that's my my old nickname. Yeah. They used to call me Bucky Ducky. <laughs> but uh, well, you were always around. I was the man. manager. I know I, you, you were. Know, you I were was, the guy. Yeah. I mean, I had I had some good mentors and Scott Glenn and my cousin Randall. Right. You know, they Randall went to Mansfield. Right. Yeah. And we'd take that trip up every every weekend. I mean, I yeah. when Randall wasn't playing, he he broke his jaw one year. Okay. We'd still go up. Me, my grandma, my aunt Sharon. Uh, I, I, I always would be around football. Even when I was up at the games, I'd be up on the hill playing somewhere. Yeah, and I remember even, you know, little Aaron when he was around, man, he always was out there with the ball, always had that big smile. He still got that big smile, and that's infectious, and, and that's what draws so many people to you. But, you know, I was looking over some of your things, and, and I, I'm proud to say that, you know, you're a, you're a member of the Tri-County uh, Hall of Fame. Got you into the State Hall of Fame, Pennsylvania yeah, thanks State to you. Hall of Fame. Thanks to you. Last I appreciate year, thank it. you. And, and, of course, the West Virginia Hall of Fame as well. So, you know, you, you've had a lot of good things happen and, and uh, certainly well-deserved, but it's, it's pretty cool. Pretty it cool. is, you know, it, it's a dream, you know, from my family is all about sports, mm -hmm. you know, the Lacey side, the Beasley side, I have the Rickett side. Yeah. I mean, you can go down the line and I always tell my daughters about – you know, the gene pool that they have right. is, is amazing, you know. So, I mean, I, I just have remember all the times of sitting back uh, at my grandmom's house on Walnut Street and just studying the trophies of my Uncle Frankie, my Uncle Gary. Uh, I would always see my trophies from my Uncle Butch. Uh, I mean, he ran track. So yeah, yeah. It was like, it was like, always in me to do something athletically well when you say when you say Lacey Beasley and Ricketts I mean it, it doesn't get any better than that in Pottstown uh, folklore and 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 uh, football basketball baseball track I mean their names their, their every names. sport and and you certainly did now you know and a lot of people don't realize that you you prepped a year at, at, at the uh, Valley Forge Military Academy and and I kind of wanted to ask you what that was like how, how did you did you like that was it good for you uh, was it beneficial how, how did you handle oh, it? It was definitely beneficial, you know. Coming out of, uh, a lot of people don't know this story about me coming out. Well, I fractured my kneecap my junior right, yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I fractured my kneecap that summer because I, I was so antsy. I couldn't even sit around in the cast. I would go to the center every night, play basketball with a full cast on. Nobody knew. But uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. And Coach Hank King comes up into the locker room. He's a referee. And he just pulls me to the side. And he's like, Beasley, what are you going to do? I was like, I don't know, Coach, you know. I took one visit to Delaware State. And I just felt like I was better than that. Right. I, I felt like I could play at a higher level. Well, you, basketball was your first love, though. You know, that was what yeah, you really wanted definitely. to pursue. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I, it was kind of like a roll the dice thing. I, I went with my better odds of making it right. for a full scholarship. Yeah. That's, that's the main thing I was looking at. It's trying to get a full scholarship yeah. somewhere to go to college. Well, I always said the same thing about Del Savage, as great a high school basketball player he was. Oh, I man. thought for sure as a tight end or DN, he would have had that, you know, with proper training, coaching, and things like that, that we could have, that he could have really been a player. Especially but, a DN. DN, oh, for man. sure, for sure. Well, you know, uh, I, do a, I do a radio show out of Dallas with uh, – 
Robin Valatudo, the sports angel, if you will. And uh, Aaron helped to, to hook me up with her and get connected with that. And she started out as a cheerleader for, for Aaron when he was with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, and they've been friends ever since. And we got her on the line. And we're going to talk a little bit about football and, and life and whatever with, with Robin. And hey, Robin, you're on the Monday morning quarterback. Are you there? Hey, guys. Hello from Big Dallas, Texas. <laughs> yeah, well, you're on you're on the air with uh, myself and with, and with Aaron, and uh, we want to find out how you're doing. Every time uh, I, I hear from you, you're all over the place. You're all over the world. You're in Jacksonville. You're in Texas. You're in the, you're in the island somewhere. How you doing? Doing great. I wish I was all over the world. Those days were back in the early years of the Jacksonville Jaguars, right, Aaron? Yeah. Uh, so yes. it, how you doing, Robin? It's all, you know, homebound now. <laughs> it is so good to hear your voice, Aaron and Dave. Thanks so much for having me join you guys on such a special night. Yeah, you, it is, it is a big killer, night for it. Killer yeah. King Bees. Yeah, it's a big night for us. And I, I thought maybe we'd jump right into a little Dallas talk. Uh, we'll get into some Jaguar talk a little bit later. But uh, how about them Cowboys, huh? Unbelievable. Something to cheer about, really, for the first time since 2007. That seems so far away. And DeMarco Murray, young running back, you know, reaching a milestone record and leading in the NFL now with 100-yard rushing games, beating Jim Brown. Who would have guessed that? Yeah, how about but, it? Maybe, know, I, with that, yeah, maybe with one that of the greatest, yeah, yeah. And one of the greatest football players ever, yeah. if not the greatest football player. Yeah, but you know it's funny. I, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here with a defensive back, uh, Robin, and uh, one of the things that, that people were worried about in Dallas was their secondary the and their defense. The defense oh, you know, they lost to Marcus Ware. Sean Lee gets hurt. That you know, they lose a couple of yeah. guys. But boy, where they come in defensively has really been unbelievable. You know what, though? I still think Demarcus Ware could have been a huge impact on the defense tonight. It, just watching what he's doing in Denver last night was incredible. But, yeah, Rolanda McLean coming out of retirement twice and turning out to be, uh, you know, the leading uh, tackler for the Dallas Cowboys right now. That in itself is such a huge story. And uh, some of these young guys stepping in on the defensive line. Go ahead. So, Robin, do you, do you analyze the games like that? I always thought you just watched the cheerleaders and analyzed them. <laughs> Where have you been for 10 years, my friend? Well, I know I, every time I was at a game, I remember you would always be facing the opposite way. You were never watching the game. <laughs> yeah, you are so right. For nine seasons, that's all I was worried about. Was like what it, lines were those girls on? And, uh, you know, sometimes you get run out of bounds or something. Yeah, right. They, Robin always had her own personal protector to watch her back. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff, Yeah, they still, they still snuck around my back, though. They, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny because, um, yeah, because Robin and, and Aaron go back to Jacksonville Jaguar days and uh, – you know, that was in 1996. 96. 96. Aaron wow. comes yeah, out Aaron. as this young rookie uh, drafted in the third round, the number 63rd pick overall to the to the Jaguars. That was the second year of their existence, was it? Yes. Second, second year. year. Yeah, yeah, they started in 95. And, Robin, had you been there from the beginning, or when did you start? Yeah, I, w I was very fortunate to be there from the very beginning, the very first year with Tom Coughlin. And, Aaron, I think I've probably told this story to you, too, but Coughlin really did not even acknowledge me or talk to me for almost two years. <laughs> and then by the third, fourth year, he actually would ask how the girls did at halftime. I mean, that was a milestone <laughs> in my career. <laughs> well, I, I can believe that out of Tom Coughlin. Coughlin. I mean, he, he certainly seems to be all business. And, and I, I know you always liked him. You know, he was a good coach for you oh, and uh, took care of you, didn't we he? We butted heads pretty often. <laughs> we definitely butted heads, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. But Aaron, crazy. did you, Aaron, did you like the fact that he was a very disciplined coach? I, coach, and I how do you compare did. him I, to I talk about coming it, in I, today? Yeah, I talk about it a lot. How, like when I when I left, I really appreciated that structure that he that he had for us. You remember, everything was bullet pointed by the minute. I mean, he. Even on game days, you know, if we played like a night, a night game, it would be like it starts at 8.35 or something. He would have 8.35 and 30 seconds. Like yeah. he was so detailed. I mean, <laughs> that's the one thing I did miss. The other coaches all had but their own. But he also made you accountable. Yes. 
Well, I mean, you had a little bit of that from the Valley Forge military, though. You had a little background of that thing, yeah. Well, there's some ways to get by in okay. military school, you know. <laughs> well, guess what, Robin? Yes, now, Aaron Jackson... still found out how to have fun. Yeah, I know, he absolutely. I, well, he's, from, he's from Pottstown. He's got to have fun. <laughs> and then I went to West Virginia, And then too. he went to West Virginia. Yeah, but right. look at that smile, Robin. Yeah. You know, he's got that infectious smile that gets everybody in a good mood. But, you know, you have to talk a little bit about Jacksonville with their big win this week. Blake Bortles, the, their, you know, their new uh, number one draft pick who is their, their franchise guy with a big uh, big uh, win for Jacksonville and I'm sure they're all excited up down there. The only thing I say, I can't really give him credit when he threw three interceptions. Yeah, well it wasn't all him. <laughs> well, Denard Robinson who was a quarterback exactly. in Michigan is now the <laughs> running back and and I'm thinking wow, where's that coming from? But, He's probably the second best quarterback on the team. Yeah, how about it? <laughs> Do you follow Jaguars still? You know still? what guys, I, yeah actually I was in town, Aaron, uh, when the Colts were there and oh my gosh, it was so amazing watching Andrew Luck. Yeah. And that's when Chad Henney was the starting quarterback. Halfway through the game, they swished, they put Bortles in, and he did the exact same thing, Aaron. He made, he scored a couple of touchdowns, and then he literally had two or three interceptions. It was from one end of the spectrum to the other. So I hope that they can rally that positive side of his talent in. And uh, I just think he needs more playing time. Well, you know, it's funny, Robin, and you weren't able to see the show earlier, but uh, I have my high school player and coach of the, uh, the week on, and Chad Brubaker, who was a coach who's now at Springford, he was at Wilson High School, which is in Reading, and he coached Chad Henney. So Chad Henney was a big star. Yeah, he was a big star in our area in high school. Wanted to go to Penn State, but Paterno told him he was not going to be able to have an opportunity to compete for a starting spot as a freshman, and that's why he went to Michigan, Michigan. and started for four years at Michigan. So what do you story. think of Chad Henney now? Because I know he, you know, he had some sparks in Miami. He's had sparks in Jacksonville. In my opinion, he's just a solid backup quarterback. Yeah, I agree. I think he is. That's where his lot is. He could be a, a, a Don Strock kind of a guy. I mean, he certainly, when he's dirty, he's not going to hurt you. He might not be the guy who's going to take you to the playoffs in the Super Bowl. But I think in today's world, and you know this, Aaron, these guys get hurt all the time. They need to have a solid backup quarterback. Well, especially you need a quality vet with all these young quarterbacks coming into the league. I mean, every year a new guy's coming in, and I mean he's and they're put, putting him in there earlier and, and that earlier. Pressure yeah, builds up. Yeah. I mean, when you look in through history, most guys who are successful are the guys who waited. I yes, mean, look at Rodgers, right, Aaron right, Rodgers, yeah, right. Steve McNair right. waited two yep, or three years. Yep. Well, Steve Young was behind uh, Montana. Exactly. I mean, a lot of good quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yep. you know, and Rodgers sat behind Far for and waited his turn and, and learned, and I, I think that was certainly a recipe. But today, with all the money they're giving these young bucks, they're coming in and throwing them right yeah. in there, man. They're making them play. Throwing them to the wolves. Well, I think one of the greatest stories of a quarterback who is ultimately Hall of Fame material for sure, one of the best quarterbacks in the game today, that's Tom Brady. Six-round pick, waited four or five years to get yeah. his start. Well, yeah, and he probably wouldn't even have gotten that shot, Robin, had not mm-hmm. bled so would have got hurt or whatever, yeah. you know. And Mo Lewis. Yeah, so he got a, you know, he got an opportunity to play, and, and he was ready, and he certainly has taken advantage of that. Well, what do you see? Uh, you what do you see heading down the road, uh, Robin? We have a couple of minutes left here. What do you see heading down the road between the Eagles and the Cowboys in this dogfight for the NFC East? I think Texas is going to rumble on Thanksgiving Day. Whoa. Pitbull's coming to play at halftime for a reason, guys. That's all I'm saying. The name like Pitbull, you better watch out. <laughs> well, you might not enjoy Aaron, the Thanksgiving meal, I Robin. Know you, I, I was ready to ask you this question. I know you'll know. I have no clue who he is. Who are you talking about? Pitbull. They just, oh, he announced oh, I don't know who that is. Friday. Aaron, do you know who Pitbull is? Pitbull is a big halftime or rapper. He's, uh, he's the guy from Miami, the rapper. I, I don't know who he is. I have no clue. He's kind of he like a pop B rapper, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I figured they went after him to intimidate the Eagles. You know, <laughs> I'm more of a Frank so Sinatra kind of guy and stuff, though, Rob. <laughs> I don't know who Pitbull is. But, hey, you know what? We got to go. We gotta, we're up against a commercial break, Rob, and I wanted to get you on air with Aaron and and I appreciate all the time we have together on Saturday mornings and stuff. But we're going to talk again before this Thanksgiving game, and we're going to get a little something going on with that game. But that should be really interesting. Would love to. So glad that you're back on the, uh, on the air. And, Aaron, I hope to see you at the anniversary game November 30th in Jacksonville. November 30th. I'm trying to get there. I, I'm right. busy. Well, be <laughs> my friend. Thanks, I'm very busy. <laughs> All right. We've well, got, got a lot of things going there. on. 
All right, Rob. Well, listen, thanks again, and, and keep in touch. And we appreciate you taking a few minutes out here to help us out here on the Monday Morning Quarterback. Thanks so much, gentlemen. All right, take, all right, take care. Take care. Later, all right, we got to take a quick time out. Uh, when we come back, we got some other things we got to do yet. We got our game balls to give out. We got five pack picks. I'm going to go head to head with Aaron on a couple of games right here on the Velaz Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Lawhurst on Insurance, and we're in your community. Grab your mug and your kilt, and come on down to Doc Watson's. We have great food, drinks, and different bar games. Our nightly specials will keep you coming back for more. Join us Monday through Friday, 4 to 6, for some fun at happy hour with dollar-off drinks. The pub is newly renovated and under new management. It will surely become your new favorite place. We're located at 1080 East Philadelphia Avenue in Gilbertsville. Doc Watson's, a true Irish pub. At long last, date night has arrived. And you want to make it something special. Something romantic. You've heard a lot of great things about Panavino in the new downtown district. Fine Italian dining with a cosmopolitan flair. Drinks before dinner at the bar? Why not? Then it's just us. Savoring the creations of Chef David Brennan. What's this? Dinner and a movie for two? Only $50? Panavino Italian Restaurant truly is the beginning of the perfect evening. In the new downtown Reading. Score with big savings at Sanatoga Thriftway. Our large selection of food, drinks, and household items at great prices will keep you coming back. Stop by the deli and order big party platters so you can be fully prepared for the big game. As always, our friendly staff and fast checkout will make your shopping experience quick and enjoyable. Sanatoga Thriftway is celebrating our 14th anniversary of serving the Tri-County area. So stop by and check us out so we can check you out. This portion of the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback is brought to you by Doc Watson's, a true Irish pub. Hey, we're back here on the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback. Dave Ridenauer and the Killer Bees, Aaron Beasley. And it was always fun talking to Rob. As I said, I do a radio show with her in Dallas uh, uh, twice a month on Saturdays. It's always a lot of fun. She's a, she's a great person. She, she really is, and, and I appreciate Aaron uh, hooking me up with her, and, and we got a little thing going on there and, and on the radio. And, we talk, and I'm, you know, I'm Eagles guy. They're Cowboys. We go back and forth. We have a lot of fun with that. But, you know, it's funny. You, know, you and I were talking a little bit off air, and Peyton Manning, you know, just breaks the record and 510 touchdown passes. I mean, that's, that's that is amazing. Yes. And uh, I know you played against him a few times. Uh, Tell us a little bit about what it was like going up against Peyton Manning. Well, you play someone like that, I mean, you know he's, he's seen every, everything that you can throw at him. So we really studied how he got into his play. You know, we, we broke down that he would, he would wait usually under 10 seconds to really get into his check. So what we did, we would stand four across you know, as a secondary. So we don't want to give any tips of if it's a two or if it's cover three. Uh, sometimes we would move our safeties to play a free instead of a strong because, I mean, you know who's the free safety and who's the strong safety right. when you know the lineup. I mean, right. Sam Garns is our strong right, safety. Right, so, right, right. you know, once in a while we move him to free and have our other guy come down. But what we did, we would hold it until he did all that jibber-jabber, we used to call it. Mm -hmm. And by the time he did that, he either had to make his call 
or he was probably going to be out of time and had to call timeout or get a delay of game. Yeah. So it was. It's, it's, you have to play a chess game with a guy. Like I, that. Absolutely. And then you know it was funny because last year with his Omaha, Omaha, Omaha stuff and all the fakes and all the deeks he gives out there, and and half the teams didn't know if he was checking down or just you know decoy and all that stuff. But and I, and I and I know that you know each week you prepare as a professional football player, you prepare each week. But I'm sure there were a couple of weeks and and a, a, a week like you're getting ready to play Peyton Manning that you pay a little extra attention to detail and some other things that I'm sure you know because he's going to throw the ball all over the field. Oh, you don't – I mean, especially every game now is so, I mean, yeah. highly publicized. Uh, with a guy like Peyton, I mean, you definitely put the extra film work in. Uh, you definitely get in your, your own playbook as well, you know. A lot of the times, I mean, you have to know what you're doing. Because I mean, we built certain packages that week for just for that just game. for that game. Yeah, yeah. Especially when we had a guy like Dom Capers. So. Right, right. Yeah, and as, you know, he's certainly a, a defensive genius in, in his own right. But and I'm sure that was pretty cool. And again, when you're out there on an island, you know, you don't want to. <laughs> that's a bad idea. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because I I talked to James Coleman, who is an NFL ref from Pottstown. He's out doing a, a speaking engagement because he was going to call in. He wanted to talk to you too. But uh, you know, it's it's sort of tough to play defensive back today. I, I'm oh, sure, uh, you know, you look at some of these games, I mean, it's either a flag or something almost on every play. Uh, it's sort of tough on the DBs. It, it, it is, man. It's, you can't be too physical. I mean, and I think one thing that hurts now with that, that fade stop, you know, the back shoulder right, throws. Right, yes, yes. I mean, you could almost just throw that and draw a penalty. Absolutely. Because the guy is always going to – we're always told to have a top shoulder on a receiver. So, by – me being in that position, I, I make him come through me again. So he can make that call anytime. And yeah, me. and that's almost the illegal contact after the five yards thing and all that other stuff. And, and you know, I know it was in the preseason, it was tough to watch. It was really tough to watch professional yeah. football. You thought every game was going to be four yeah, hours. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like thinking, okay, they're going to start at one. They'll be done at five, six o'clock, you know. And that certainly took away all the rhythm of those games. But did, did you ever have an opportunity to pick, any, pick a pass off from uh, Peyton Manning? Uh, I never got an interception off of Peyton. Okay. Uh, he, he, got me, he got me one time. Uh, against Marvin Harrison. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, that, I was trying to be over physical, and you know, we always were told if you're over physical, you're going to be like two trains passing in, in a night. Right. You know, if I'm going the way he's going, and he's, and I mean, so as a defensive back, you never want to be over aggressive because if you miss, yeah, I mean, one inch is that's, that's not good. Becomes, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's not good. The band starts playing, and it was on yeah, the right. road. It was a Monday night game, oh, and it, you know, yeah. those things you you never forget. You know, but it's it's awesome though when you talk about. I mean, you, when you were able to, you know, I knew you when you were a little guy, and you were always a good guy the whole time. But now we're talking, and you're talking about going up against the Peyton Mannings and the Marvin Harrisons of the world. You know, that's 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 some experiences, it man. Is. That uh, you know, very few guys get an opportunity to say they had and. And I know what I did and playing at a very high Division II level. And I played against some guys who made the pros, Bruce Harper and Doug Dennison. And, and, uh, and we had a, there was a wide receiver from Shippensburg. I can't remember his Bruce name. Bruce Harper was a good friend of my, my dad. Yeah, yeah, Kutztown. yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Kutztown always had a lot of good individuals. Not a great team, but individuals, they were very, very good. But I played against guys who went to uh, – and Haslett, who is now a defensive coach. And Jim Haslett? Jim Haslett, yeah. Oh, okay. He went to IUP. See, it's yeah. funny, like, when, when I would, you know – to all the coaches at their games or, you know, good game. Right. A lot of guys would always come up to me and always ask about the Firebirds. Yeah, the Firebirds, I mean, yeah. It was, I, and I was surprised a lot of guys knew, like uh, Emmett Thomas. You know, I, I played with him, played for him in Atlanta, and that's all he talk about, you know. Man, them Firebirds were some bad boys. Yeah, days, <laughs> that, you know? that was good stuff. Yeah, I mean, and I, I was – I would have a lot of coaches. Uh, my, my D coordinator at Atlanta, at Donatel, I mean, it – it was a lot of guys. Dan Henning. Yeah. He yeah. Would, he brought him up one time. Okay. And it was it was fun. Yeah, man. it was it's interesting. And who was who was the toughest guy you got matched up against? I mean, who who didn't you like to play against? I mean, who was a guy that this was really really tough for you? Was there a matchup problem or uh, um, somebody that really was was a, a crafty guy? I mean, every every day at work in Jacksonville was tough with Jimmy oh, Smith. Oh, yeah, that's right. You yeah, know, right, right. against Jimmy Smith every yeah. day. But he made you better, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because he always gives me credit because, you know, we would practice so hard that after every practice, I would almost, 
you know, have to rewind the practice in my head because I want to know how do I cover this guy. Right. I mean, because yeah. I see him go out and do it every game, and then at practice I got to go against him every play. Right, right. Well, that's one of the things I think people don't realize and fans out there. Like, at practice you got pride too. You got pride and you got an ego where you're not there, and so does he. And so you don't want him to get an edge. You don't want him you to get an edge. So you got that little give and take. Even though it's practice, you're on the same team. That certainly makes you We used you to study each other. Yeah, you know, he used yeah. to tell me, man, I study you. I'm watching you. Because, <laughs> you know, my rookie year, I mean, the receiving core was, you know, Keenan McCardell. Right. Jimmy Smith and Andre Risen was actually down there, but Andre was, he was the vet, but Andre knew the game. Yeah. Andre would pull me to the side and show me some different things with bump and run. Mm -hmm. You know, he, cause he, 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 he was, was just a little guy, but he oh, could run. Oh man, huh? but he was quick, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's the thing people don't realize, like you see somebody get beat and it looks like he's, he can't get his hands. That guy is that quick yeah. up there. These yeah. guys are. Well, did amazing. they have a big tight end too? Was uh, decent at uh, Jacksonville back in that time. Uh, well, we had Derek Brown from Notre Dame. Okay. Uh, Kyle Brady. Brady. Actually, that's the Brady guy who's played. thinking of Brady. Yeah, Brady's Kyle Brady. Brady's yeah. a good yeah. buddy of yeah. mine. Yep, Kyle Brady. That's the guy I was thinking of. But uh, certainly great times. And, and, and you know, Tom Coughlin, when you talk about him, he's still in the league, man. Hey, he's, he's, still, he's still doing he's it. He's a, a great coach, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's I, awesome. I, I, at the time, I really didn't like playing for him I'm telling you but now I realize what yeah. what he did for my yeah. career as well that's unbelievable it, it's pretty cool and and you know each week uh, we do give a game ball Aaron and and uh, what we do is uh, we pick somebody out or a player team whatever and then it's brought to you by the styling room I was just there to see my buddy last week he hooked me up took good care of me He's got his shop all redone now, and uh, there's Paul right there, Paul Strauss from the starting room at 943 North Hanover Street in Pottstown, and he's been with me from the from the beginning. And and uh, we have uh, we give a game ball. Aaron, uh, did you get an opportunity to watch over the weekend? And anybody jump out at you was uh, deserving? Uh, I like Russell West. I mean Russell Wilson's performance, though they lost. Gosh. I mean that was unbelievable to see 300 yards passing, 100 yards rushing. But I would have to go with Peyton Manning. Okay. I mean, breaking a record like that um, and still going, yeah. you know. I mean, when you um, think about 510 touchdowns, I mean, I, mean, I, know, I know it's a, big, a different game. Even when you played and before your time, it was a lot more of a run game and they didn't throw the ball quite as many times. But still, 510 touchdown passes, it's amazing. That's a lot of ball. It is a lot of ball. And then I saw like 100 and some was to Marvin Harrison. Yeah, That's, yeah, your guy. Yeah, that is a guy. lot of ball. That, that really is. And I'm going to give mine to Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins mm, from Fort Myers, uh, Florida. This, this is a good story. Danny Weller, my guy from yeah. Pottstown, is coaching high school football in Fort Myers. He calls me up and says, Dave, you got to watch this guy, Sammy Watkins, man. He's a senior for us. He's going to go to Clemson next year. You got to watch him. So he calls me. Clemson is playing his first game, takes the opening kickoff back 99 <laughs> yards. First time he touched the ball as a freshman, he went 99 freshman. yards. And he played for Danny Weller at, at Fort Myers High. Wow. So I watched him, and he had a great game for Buffalo. He had nine catches for 122 yeah. yards and two TDs. Now you feel connected to him. I do. I do. I, I, I'm, I get like that, you too. You know, it's, it's funny because I watch him all the time now, and I tell these guys, <laughs> watch this Sammy Watkins kid out of out of uh, Clemson. Now he's, he's doing an approach. So I'm going to give my game ball – to Sammy Watkins, but it's amazing. And, uh, you know, when you watch a game, uh, Aaron, what do you watch? How do you watch a game? Do you look for certain things? Do you watch certain guys? Uh, how do you watch a football game? I, I really look at technique. You know, I'll watch a play and t rewind it like three times before I go and back to live TV. Like, I always like to see the – I don't even look for big hits. I don't look for – you know, I look for just the technical part of the game. Just – what what kind of call the coach made against certain uh, play that he liked or a play that he saw? Uh, I I actually I like to listen to Peyton Manning because I think I figured him out last year because I was I would always try to find my own little yeah, niches right, right, right. Yeah, you know yeah. and what we never would use the audio version while watching film we always use just the uh, the film version right, with right, the Cowboy right. but we would once in a while bring in a uh, tape of a CBS, which was you were supposed to do. Right, right. But we would listen for audibles, and I, I think I figured out what Peyton Manning was doing last year because a lot of co teams, they'll give you the R and the L. Well, he would give an L at the end of his word, 
and it meant run left. Okay. Or, okay. or R at the end of the word instead of. So we're like roll that ends in L, man. He's going left. Yeah. Okay. So he put the R in right, front right, to fool right. you. Yeah. Okay. I was and on you were on that, and you were on that. That's see, that's your old. Pot I can't down, help that's it. That's your pot down teachers right there with that stuff. Hey, you used, to, used to show me that on the uh, <laughs> eight it's tracks. It, exactly. We had the eight tracks back then, was it? <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. For <laughs> what do you think about guys like Richard Sherman? What, what, what's your opinion on that guy? What do, what do you think about him? Uh. Everyone has their different way to get pumped for a game. You know, some guys are quiet. Some guys are loud. I mean, I, it, whatever you have to do to get ready for a game out there because the intensity and the speed out there is unexplainable. Yeah. You know, a lot of people always ask me, yo, what's the difference? It is like it's, everyone's oh, a yeah. grown yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is really yeah. that fast. Out there. <laughs> well, you know, so Aaron, uh, we we normally do a segment called "By the Numbers," and and we're going to pass on that this week. We also do a, a question, but I want to I want to thank uh, John Greesmer, Jack Greesmer, his accounting. We do a "By the Numbers" segment, and and because we have Aaron on here, we're going to pass on that. That we talk a little bit about fantasy. Uh, so we're going to pass on that this week, and also the big Frank question of the week, sponsored by Doc Watson's. Uh, get yourself over there, Doc. Watson's for for a, a beer and a sandwich. It's a great place to watch a game, but also Jack Reesmer. I want to thank those people, and we'll be back with that next week when we, we get more into our, our regular schedule. But I, I, there's so many things I want to talk to, and I want to kind of ask you a little bit about this current thing now. Percy Harvin gets traded. Deshaun Jackson gets traded. Uh, guys who sort of don't buy in, uh, maybe a problem on the, in the locker room, off the field, great talents. Um, and you're starting to see that a little bit more than you ever did. How do you feel about that as the next player? How did you guys handle those kind of things? I, I think you, we've always had it. I've seen it happening when I was playing. You know, guys they got rid of because he didn't okay. particularly fit with the system. Okay. But – I think it's just more publicized now. Well, with the ESPN you know, and, and the, the media, media is sports, everywhere. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. I mean, and the story can happen in one second. It's worldwide right. the next minute. Right. So I think it's more of that than what it is that it's happening. Uh, you know, I, I just think guys are – it's a different day and age now. You know, young these young guys now are coming from different, you know, different generation. You know, I, I think this generation, the younger generation is a little more spoiled. They have a lot more things in front of them where they don't have to work as hard as we used to yeah. to, to, to find opportunity. You know, just an example is the recruiting circuit that I, you know, I'm kind of helping with some younger kids. You know, you can get recruited on your own. You don't need the coach to go do it for you anymore. You yeah. know, we had to have a coach send tape yeah, out. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, now, I mean, you – you have huddle and these, these right, new programs. Yeah, you yeah. you just get your name out there, and if you can play ball, they'll find you. Yeah, because I know you're still involved. You do some training and stuff. You work with wide receivers and D-backs and some skilled guys doing some some drills and things to get them better. I, I know when uh, Potsgrove got beat by Ben Franklin, I yeah. believe it was, yeah. you had a bunch of those guys, and you said you knew that uh, Potsgrove was in for a tough night. Oh, yeah. They, they worked out with us from January – until you know their season started and you know that's the one advantage that these football factory states you know like the floridas right. and Cali right. they play ball year round yeah. once their season's over they're back out there yeah. training yeah. they're not playing basketball or they don't usually play too many two-way sport guys out there anymore. <laughs> i know it's crazy well, you know it's funny because we could talk for hours and hours and hours aaron and we're sort of up against <laughs> it here uh we have our five pack picks that we normally do we're going to do that real quick we're going to do five pack picks real quick aaron uh you against me panavino out of reading uh tonight's game houston and pittsburgh who do you like where's it at Pittsburgh. You should not Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. All right. I like Pittsburgh, too. We're going to both go with them. Thursday night is San Diego at Denver. Phil Rivers having a good year going up against Peyton Manning at Denver Thursday night. San Diego. I'm going San Diego, too. I like them in a little <laughs> bit of an upset. Sunday, we got Baltimore at Cincinnati. Baltimore's D is looking good. Okay. I'll go with the home team. I'll give Cincinnati a blow there. We'll go with Baltimore there. Green Bay at New Orleans on Sunday. Green Bay. I'm going Green Bay too. They're they're playing well. And of course the Eagles at the Cardinals. Who do you like? 
Cardinals. All right, I'll go I Eagles. Know, so you I got know, Cardinals there. All right. All right, it. that's okay, my man. Well, listen, <laughs> I want to thank you for coming yeah. up. It's been great. We're going to get you up there again. But I want to thank Robin Valatudo for calling in from Dallas. And, of course, Jim Mick, Chad Brubaker, Zach Dirty, all of our advertisers and sponsors. Without them, we couldn't do it. Again, for Killer Bees, I'm Dave Ryan. Thanks for watching the Velahos Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback.